Hello everyone. So CNS central nervous system examination is one of the things that we run away from in medical school and a thing that we are we're not really comfortable doing it in a postgraduate years as well and finding places and resources where we can collect some information on how to go about it. So this video will be about giving you some tips and enumerating the entire sequence of CNS examination so you don't miss a thing and when you know what to do and I'll be giving some pointers on how to do it as well then you are going to master this art and it's not going to be difficult then and you will be like Thor doing those DTRs with your big huge hammer. So examination of the nervous system. First up the students are scared because the CNS examination is different from the other examinations. The others, uh, the respiratory cardiac and the GI examination tend to find, f follow the same scheme that we remember so well. It is lengthy. It takes a long tough time and we are scared because of that. We're not really practiced and we want neurology or neurosurgery to do all these exams and tell us what's happening. It requires special equipment like the fundoscope, like the hammer, like pins and like the tuning forks and whatnot. And, and it's got difficult names such as the Budzinski's uh, sign and the Kerning sign and two-point tactile discrimination. So it's got something difficult about it. But is it difficult? I don't think so. So let's do this. First and foremost, you need to find out the higher mental functions. So you need to examine the higher mental functions of the patient. You examine the orientation in time, in space, and in person. So first and foremost, you check the in higher mental function examination. You start off the CNS exam with this. Check the orientation. Is the guy oriented time, space, or persons? And you see the person if they're having any delusion that you might find out, a hallucination talking into the air or something like that. What kind of effect the person is giving? Is he very aggressive? Is he docile and just calm? That is for a person who's awake. So if a person is not really awake, so that, that is something you're finding as well. You check the mentation of the patient. You check arithmetic prowess, how much maths uh, and intelligence the person has. So one of the themes and the most uh, widely recognized one is uh, subtracting seven from a hundred. So you try this five times, so hundred minus seven, you ask the person, can they get the right answer? And they continue to 93, 86, 79, and so on. And that you can check the uh, mathematical calculation, uh, how much the person is intelligence. So next up is memory. And my memory is so bad. How bad is it? I forgot what we're talking about. So memory, you need to check short term and long term memory and establish the memory of the patient. We're done with the higher mental function. One part is done. Next up, examination of speech. So you're not just seeing how the patient is talking. You've got to look for the fluency, for the comprehension of the patient. Can the patient repeat? Can the patient name people and objects? Can the patient read from a book or read numbers? And the writing of the patient, you will ask the patient to write and draw and check that as well. So first up was higher mental function. Next up, examination of speech. Now for the really difficult part. Uh, well, it becomes easier with practice the cranial nerve examination. So, you know, 12 cranial nerves, we're not going to go into the details and we'll make a separate video for that. But you check the olfactory, the optic, the oculomotor, trochlear abducens, trigeminal, facial, vestibular, cochlear, glossopharyngeal, vagus, and the accessory nerve and do all the relevant examinations to the patient in the third part of your exam. Fourth up is the motor system examination. And this is something that is tested quite often separately as well as uh, in a short case. So if you're having a short case examination in your uh, medical school or your postgraduate exams, you might get just get a motor system examination. So uh, we'll spend some time around here. First up, you need to inspect the patient and look at the muscles and what's going on and the limbs 
uh, and, and also check the involuntary or voluntary movements that the patient might be making right now. Many things come into this domain. Again, we make another video to go into it. You check the fasciculations, you check tremors, and all sorts of those things. And then you check the tone of the patient's limbs. Is it uh, a flaccid limb? Is it a spastic or a, a rigid limb? You check the power. And you use the MRC scale, which I'm sure you all are familiar with, the power from 0 to 5. Now, six grades of power, and you characterize the proximal and distal muscles according to that. Then you check the reflexes. More often, we forget the superficial reflexes, but superficial and deep tendon reflexes, both are included in this part. And then the grading, obviously, is absent. One plus for diminished reflexes that come on. Uh, Pay, uh, gymnastics maneuver and 2 plus for normal, 3 plus for uh, uh, exaggerated uh, reflex and clonus that has sustained contraction. Next, you check the coordination of the uh, limb in the motor system examination. Now, you need to have a power more than 3 by 5 for that to happen in the upper limb and in the lower limb as well. And most important, you need to check the gait of the patient, especially if you're checking the uh, lower limbs of the patient. You ask the patient if he's got power more than three by five and can stand. You ask the patient to walk around. So many findings come in this part of the motor system examination and then the examination of the back. So just to go through it one more time, motor system examination includes inspection, checking the tone, checking the power, checking reflexes and coordination the gait and examination of the back. Your technique needs to be good as well. This is this is no way to check the reflex of a patient. I've got some videos that I'd uh, link in the video and right at the end as well. I've got a full playlist of neurological examinations, so you, you check that out. Then sensory system examination up at number five, you check the later column sensations, uh, pain and temperature, the dorsal column sensations, vibration, joint position sensation, check all the cortical sensations. If you're looking at a patient with stroke, you check for uh, two-point tactile discrimination and graphesthesias and all the cortical sensations. Also in special circumstances and patients that are relevant, check the dermatomal loss of pain and temperature or sensations. You, you may check it in a nerve distribution loss and look for a sensory level, especially if you've got a patient of para paraplegia or quadriplegia. Sixth up is cerebellar examination. So you check nystagmus, speech, signs in the upper limb, lower limb, and ataxias. Complete cerebellar examination is at number six. And number seven is signs of meningeal irritation. You can look for neck stiffness. Here is the kerning sign. And here is the aptly name, I guess, Budzunski sign. So uh, you check the difference between that. You fold the leg up. Uh, in here and you check the leg uh, folding, flexing back up, the uh, lower limb flexing back up when you apply pain through flexion of the neck. So just to summarize and go through it one quick time, you only need to really remember the main things that you're checking. You check the higher mental functions, you assess the speech, you do the cranial nerve examination, the motor system examination, you examine the sensory system of the patient, you check the cerebellar signs, and you check the signs of meningeal irritation. And I hope by following this scheme, you will not forget any part of the examination and have a complete case ready in front of you and it's all about practice you practice and you start remembering all these things and you do not forget and also not forget gait in the motor system examination it is really important most people forget that thank you and i hope you like and subscribe to my channel you share this video with your friends and if there's a video that you would like me to make tell that in the comments and see the neurology signs they get updating as i see more patients and make more videos with their consent so check that playlist out thank you so much and don't be scared of neurological examination